Hey everybody, it's Lashram here with another video tutorial highlighting the Decentraland SDK. Today, we are going to show you how to hide certain parts of your scene. Think of the Harry Potter tent. It's small on the outside, but when you step inside, it's huge. Or Alice in Wonderland, or the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. When they enter the wardrobe, there's a vast world inside. Uh, the Decentraland SDK gives us the ability to create these hidden layers vertically, which opens up all kinds of new possibilities. So let's jump in, take a look. As you can see, I have an example scene. And on the ground floor, I just have a simple gateway door entry. And when I walk through that archway, it's going to teleport me up into the interior of a store. That store is currently hidden up there because I don't want me to see it until I'm on the inside. And when I'm on the inside, I don't want to see anything on the outside. So I'm gonna walk inside here and I immediately get teleported to inside the store. Now, if I could look around and see, everything on the ground level is now hidden from this user until I go back down and now it's visible again and the store gets hidden. So that's what we're gonna show you how to do today. It's a really cool concept that unlocks the potential of different layers visually within your scene. And to test that, uh, we can actually open up a new browser window and have a test environment. So that's what I've already done. So I'm gonna shrink this scene halfway and then I'm going to shrink this scene halfway so that everyone can get a view of both people so now you can see that I have I have two uh, two local accounts right here and so watch what happens I'll leave this account on the left hand side just to see visually right again there's no visible store and let's have our second person go walk in and disappear so they're gonna walk in you'll see them on our left they walk in and they disappear now you're probably wondering where the heck do they go the person on the right is in the store the person on the left can't see the person on the right and vice versa if pretty cool right so now I'm gonna walk out of the store on the right come back down and there's my player as if they were back on the ground so we'll do that one more time and then we'll go in the code and show you how to achieve this. So the player on the right is gonna go walk into the doorway and they get teleported to the store up in the sky and they disappear. I can no longer see them. The person in the store, even though there are walls, everything on the ground is hidden. I'm gonna walk out of the store again through the teleport and look, I appear. So how do we achieve this? Let's dive in to the code and check it out. So I've got a template scene and hopefully we can put this on the awesome repository for everybody to take a look at. I've done uh, a couple things here is I've spaced out the code quite a bit and I'll zoom in for everyone to see, but I've, I've added spacing here so that as I'm discussing the, these topics, it's easier to understand the code that I'm talking about versus get all confused um, of all the code bunched together. Just know that in, in code, you know, vertical space doesn't always matter. So let's break this scene down. What we have are a couple of um, imports and I wanted to go over those first. So I'll show you the package.json file right now because we installed a couple uh, new libraries. Um, some of them are pertinent, some of them are not for this tutorial. The only one that are really pertinent are the ECS scene utils and the builder HUD. Uh, the builder HUD is a different video tutorial and a library that allows us to visually move items in 3D space so that we don't have to compute the math. Um, we definitely need the ECS scene utils for the trigger areas of our scene. So once we've installed those, then in our scene.json, what we need to do to move players in a scene is actually have this additional required permission. And you can find all of this on the documentation page at docs.decentraland.org. 
and just search for move player and this page will come up. So we have now the permission to move players within our scene, again, going from the ground level up to the top level. So now that we've set our scene up, let's go in and check out the code. Uh, again, we're importing our utils libraries. We're also importing the function uh, to move a player to a specific location. Uh, one thing when we do this uh, in terms of hiding and showing different areas within a scene, we like to parent things. So everything on the ground, I put into a parent entity. And that parent entity, think of, um, the Russian dolls in real life where one smaller doll fits in a, a, a little bit larger doll and a little bit larger and a little bit larger. And you kind of get this stair step of dolls that all fit inside one another. And so that's what we do with parenting. Parent being the bigger Russian doll. And then inside of that, you have all of your children entities. And then inside of those, you have smaller and smaller and smaller ones. So we create one massive parent entity and then we also add a ground door. And the ground door, pretty simple. Um, we add a component for a 3D model. We add a component for some positioning. And then we add the component for the trigger area. And this is where when a camera object or other objects move into the space, do something. And so what we can do is toggle this enable debug true to false. And you'll see in our scene code here that now when we refresh, we should get this white box as identifying the trigger area that when the avatar's head hits this area, it will do something. And so let's go show you what that do something is. Let's bring us back down here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this back to false so we know where that is. Now, the do something is on camera enter. So when I walk into this trigger area, I want to show the inside, right? That's what I want to do for the local player. Um, final thing is you'll see here that we take the door and we set it to the parent of the ground. Okay? So that's just the ground. Super simple. We have one parent entity, one 3D model entity that has a trigger component. When you enter that trigger component, we're going to call a function called show inside. Now let's scroll down a bit and let's talk about the hide avatar areas. So when a avatar walks into the space and gets teleported up and they disappear, we have these areas in Decentraland called hide avatar areas. So if, it, if an avatar is in a defined square, they will disappear. And so when I'm on the ground, I want to visibly show the hide avatar area up top, right? And when I'm up top, I don't want to show that area. I don't want to hide the avatars anymore, right? So again, I'm down here. The player on the left is up in the sky. They're hidden. But when I walk in here, I want to no longer hide the avatar up in the sky so that we can all see each other, right? And then when I go down, again, um, I'm hiding them up in the sky until they come back down and they're now visible. So it's kind of like this concept of toggling on and off depending on where you are in the scene. So if I'm on the ground, I don't want to see anybody up in the sky. If I'm in the sky, I want to be able to see everybody in the sky. So we have hide avatar areas. And that's what these do. So we have a hide avatar area to hide the people on the ground. And you notice we don't add that to the engine because we want to see people on the ground because when we load into the scene, we're on the ground. We have a hide avatar area for inside, okay? And we actually add that to the engine at the start because we're on the ground. So we want to hide anybody that's up inside. A little confusing, so I'm going to just take a second to let it sink in. 
When you're on the ground, you want to see avatars. When you're on the ground, you don't want to see avatars in the sky. When you're in the sky, you want to see avatars in the sky. When you're in the sky, you don't want to see avatars on the ground. Okay? Then, we need to define the inside, right? So again, we do that Russian doll concept of we have a main parent area. We have a floor. We have a building. And then we have another trigger. And the trigger just happens to be a wall shape. And we can turn this to true if we'd like. And we can go and see what that looks like in terms of uh, a trigger area up in the sky. Remember, let's go up here. And now we see, oh, there's our trigger area for when our avatar enters that little square, we're going to do something. And that do something now is show ground, right? When we were on the ground, we said show inside. Now when we're inside, we want to show the ground. Okay? So... Pretty simple. Again, one parent entity for the inside and every little part of the inside is parented to that main inside parent. Okay? And then the last little bit are the show inside and show ground functions. So again, when we are outside, right? Let's go to our code. When we are outside over here on the right, we want to show the ground. And once we walk on the left and go through, that's the function we want to call. When we walk through this, we're going to show the inside function, right? So here's the show inside function. What we're actually doing is saying, hey, when we go up in the sky, let's take that ground parent and scale everything down to zero, which takes every entity inside that Russian doll parent and also scales it down. We, we then need to add the entity that hides the avatars on the ground, right? So basically what we did is we said, hey, you know what? Just toggle visibility for avatars and for all the visual components on the ground. But since we're up, up in the sky inside, we need to toggle on by setting the scale to one of everything of the inside parent. And then we also said, hey, you know what? We need to remove that hide avatar on the inside because we're up inside. We want to see other players. And then the final bit is we actually need to move the player to the position to be inside. So... Let's walk through that one time in the code again. So what happens is on the right, when I walk through this trigger area, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do a couple things. It just hit everything on the ground visually, hit all the avatars on the ground. Then it displayed all of the 3D objects on the inside. It removed the hide area on the inside, so now I can see the other avatar. And then it moved me to this position, so three parts, right? Three parts. Again, hide all the visual objects on the ground, hide all the players on the ground, show all of the visual objects on the inside, delete the ability to hide the players on the inside, which essentially is show the players on the inside. And then we actually have to move the player to the inside. So now let that sink in for a second. You can pause and then we'll move to the inverse, which is going from inside to outside. So now we have, let me get to the scene. When I walk through on the left, when I walk through here, I'm going to do a couple things. So I'm going to walk through and boom, again, that's all hidden up there. That's the debugger for the trigger area. It doesn't appear in world. So I just wanted to show you at scale, that's where the avatar on the right is standing. 
So I just walked through that gray trigger area. What happened? We called the function show ground. So it's literally the opposite of show inside. What we're gonna do is say, hey, turn all the visual objects on, right? By scaling them up to 100%. We're gonna show all the avatars by removing the hide avatar area. Okay, so that gets all the ground stuff set. But then we need to say, wait a second, we no longer wanna show what's on the inside and we now want to hide the players that are up there. Excuse me. And the final thing is to actually move the player from inside back to the ground. Um, it might seem complicated, but it's all um, toggles and switches for depending on where the player is. If the player is on the ground, don't show anything in the sky. If the player is in the sky, show everything in the sky and don't show everything on the ground and vice versa. So it's a really interesting concept. Um, this can be a part of any parcel size. I believe Samsung does this very well, um, where you can have different areas in your scene feel different based on where you want the player to go. So maybe this is a really tiny building and when you enter it, boom, they're in a massive interior that would fit in a smaller tent like Harry Potter. So I'll just recap this one more time as I'll get both of our avatars <clears throat> down below. And then we will wrap it up as we are just over 18 minutes on this video, trying to keep them around 20 minutes in length. So to recap, again, this scene is about hiding a specific area within your scene and then revealing that area once a player is actually moved to that area. So here we have two avatars on the ground and one of them is going to walk into this portal area and they're going to be teleported up into the sky building. The player is now in the sky building. On the left, you can see the players in the sky building. Yay. They're in the sky building and the player on the right can't see them at all has no idea where they just went. When I join them on the right, they can now see me and we can hang out and wave to each other. And when I go back down, maybe on the left, now the person on the left can no longer see the person on the right until the person on the right comes back down and now they both can see each other. So that was a little more intermediate tutorial. Again, this is showing and hiding a specific area of your scene, whether it be a secret room, a larger room than what somebody had entered, showcasing the ability to hide avatars, to hide 3D objects, depending on a player's position in the scene. So thanks again for following along, and we'll see you next time.